Welcome back to Flames TV. Is that true? Do we have J Dr. Jekyll here or Mr. Hyde? Who's joining us today? Both. Wow. <laughs> good, good. I would have never guessed that about you. You no, seem to I, like I, relaxed. You know what? <laughs> I think. Oh, believe it. Believe it. <laughs> Is it the competition that yeah, takes over? Yeah, it's the competition. Once you get in a locker room and you start focusing and getting ready to play, it's different. You have to have that personality. Well, there's the, some uh, rivalry there between the Sutter brothers as well. And we have, we talked to Ray Schiappinella earlier. Here's what he has a funny story about two of you guys. It was in Chicago. And one of the twins uh, was playing for hers and play went in the corner, the whistle went, and there was pushing and shoving like you get in hockey games. And, but the, nobody threw any punches. And uh, the senior Sutter said to his younger brother, he says, he says, listen, he says, get, he grabbed him by the jersey, he says, get out of here right now or I'll beat you up just like I do at home. <laughs> so his brother yelled at him, but they parted ways. I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> that was Dwayne and Richie. <laughs> was I remember that. What happened? Well, I think there was just a, you know, your typical battle in front of the net or along the boards. And I think Dwayne went in to defend someone and Richie went in to defend someone. I knew it wasn't me. <laughs> But I know that, I remember that, it was those two guys. This is like, this is like, do you like this, are you coming here? Yeah. Not only do we ask you to tell us inside uh, stories about their trade rumors, but now we go back into your history here. You know, that was, those were fun times. You know, every game was intense, and, and I think more so for, for Brent and I, because we took a lot of face-offs against each other, you know, a lot of important face-offs, and we never talked. We always battled hard against each other on the ace, and I think it was probably Rich and Dwayne that, uh, we're more apt to do more of the chirping. <laughs> Mike, you have some good setter stories. Yeah, there's got to be something ticking around there in the hard drive. One thing I'd, I'd like to say before, though, is that the, the, we talk about the competitiveness between the Sutter brothers, but they were also very skilled, and they don't get enough credit. But one skilled player, and I, I just I, I admired Brian Sutter. And he wouldn't remember the story, but I would because my life flashed before my eyes. And I'll try to be brief here. I'm at an opening face-off, start of the game against Bernie Federko. And I'm hearing this maniac screaming at me. And I look over and Brian Sutter, his focus is on me. And I'm going, what the heck is going on? And I had been playing very well, so I'm thinking, okay, he's going to do something. So I win the face-off, look back to the defenseman. Next thing I'm on my back. And I'm looking, Bernie Federko wouldn't do this. Well, Brian had come from the wing and just attacked me, knocked me right to the ice to, to make a statement. He gets a penalty. We score on the power play. So my mouth, sometimes I get flat, I think, and, and I'm going to go up to Brian and say, you know, thanks a lot for the penalty. You gave us the first goal of the game. And just as that's going to come out of my mouth, I'm thinking, hey, I, I want to wake up the next morning healthy. I don't want to have <laughs> black eyes and cut uh, lips and everything else. So I kept my mouth shut, thank God. But that was Brian Sutter. He, right at the very start of the game, he was going to tell us that, hey, this is going to be a tonight. Ron, good move on his part? Probably. <laughs> 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 All right, we have to take a break. I think that's a good idea. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, time to take a break here on Flames TV. But recently, the Flames had a charity poker tournament, and here's an inside look. I'm getting my sunglasses. I'm be ready to go. Players and alumni put their best poker faces and bluffing skills to work at the Flames Ambassadors' second annual Texas Hold'em tournament. Who do you think's going to win? None of the players. <laughs> oh, okay, poker face over there. Now, who do you think will have the best poker face? Uh, D-Mac. Darren McCarty, yeah, he's got the glasses, he's got the hats that he can pull down, and I think he's ready to go. I know McLennan doesn't, so I'm going to have to go with uh, a Ginla. So, can you show me your best poker face? It's probably the stare down. That's <laughs> scary. <laughs> Other than yourself, of course, best poker face. Uh, that might be Dion. Yeah, he's got the creepy look. My poker face sucked today. And who's the best bluffer? Uh, Rhett Warner. You never know what he's got. I don't know what he's talking about half the time, so I just, I, I believe everything he says. Half's true, half's not, so. You don't know what he's thinking, so. The beard probably helps. Yeah, I think. Whatever that thing is. <laughs> yeah. I've been told that you're probably the best bluffer here. Is that true? I've lived my whole life bluffing. <laughs> Better believe it. Best buffer is Jamie McLennan. Really? He bluffs all over the place. He acts like he's tough, but he's not. <laughs> you know, he's that's right there. Well, McLennan's been bluffing the league for 16 years, so he's probably got to be right up there. He likes to compare his age. He says he looks about the same age as Lombo, so come on, is that, does he not bluff? Red said you've been bluffing the league for 16 years. <laughs> yes, Red, uh, Red, he's... <laughs> when you live in glass houses, you shouldn't throw stones. Put it that way. 
With their friendly ribbing aside, the Flames players and hundreds of other competitors helped raise more than $300,000 for the Flames Foundation for Life. Darren McCarty was the last flame standing and donated his $2,500 winnings to a great cause. The whole night's been unbelievable. This is a first class setup and, and the guys are excited about it. Uh, the organization and it's all for a good cause and I think that's uh, the best part and what people uh, tend to throw by the wayside is, is what uh, uh, who prospers out of all this.